This is, uh, I think it's, it's, we've heard a lot of great stuff this afternoon. We heard a lot of, of great insights this morning. I'm excited uh, to, to have a chat with you, but maybe, because I think we've, it seems that we've kind of skipped this a little bit with a lot of the discussions. Maybe you can take a bit to uh, describe your role and, and give a bit of your background, because I think we, we've jumped into these and we, we've given people's names and titles, but. Sure, Peter. I love that. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for inviting me on the panel. Uh, I am Umang Jindal. Uh, I work for Ericsson, and I've been working in Ericsson for approximately 18 years now. You know, Ericsson is a company where you come in and then you get absorbed. It's like a home, a second home in a, in a different way. But uh, what I have been working on is I have been uh, looking after all these softwares from a RAN and transport point of view as to what do we develop, what do we evolve, as well as on the network performance. And that's what we deliver uh, on all the networks. So that's been my key role. And I handle uh, uh, the market area, India, Oceania, and Southeast Asia, where we're looking towards all the operators and what they need uh, for their network rollouts. So, so I, I could just turn the questions around and say, correct everything I just said. You know, I just, I, I just said what we're seeing around 5G advanced. You probably have you know, some incredible insights there. But rather than have you correct uh, everything I just said, let's, let's maybe move into that last part. You know, what I wanted to do on that last part was talk about India's role and, and what India can do around 5G advance and 6G from your perspective. Obviously, you've got a, a huge view. I mean, how do you think India can, can drive the adoption of 5G? There's a huge consumer base here, right? Obviously, yes. we, we, we've seen that biggest potential consumer base you know, in the world. When you think about India versus global markets, what, what's the role of 5G in, or what's the role of India in driving 5G or what do you think it could be? I think this is a good question to start with. Uh, you know, India did a lot of good things and I'll pick one of the lines from the earlier conversation which we were talking about is that when India was delivering 5G, the world was watching. And I think that's a new trend. And I would like to thank everybody over here who helped us build this 5G networks in India. I would say, you know, India has crossed approximately 420K base stations in India in last one year. India has crossed approximately 165 million 5G subscribers who are regularly latching onto the network. So I think the journey has been great. And this could not be possible without the whole collaboration and cooperation between the academias, I would say, uh, the research institutes, the vendors, the operators, the CSPs, as well as the regulatory bodies. And you know, I would say the spectrum was available quite quickly, I think in the span of 50 days, the whole auction process and the spectrum allocation happened. So the journey has been great. Uh, and it is just a start of the journey from a 5G point of view. Today we talk about EMBB as a subscription. So, you know, mo a mobile broadband subscription, which is moving on. Uh, the next wave of the 5G, which I see adoption will happen is FWA. Things have started to happen in FWA. Today, India, I would say some metro cities are touching 20% of their traffic coming from FWA. So that's the pace in last three, four months. And moving on from FWA, I would say there's more and more happening. You know, if I took a like, regulatory point of view, uh, uh, India made out their new telecom telegraph policy last year, which is again talking about new things in terms of how can we simplify new size rollout for more capacities, for more indoor coverage. And I think ROU permissions were really simplified in that from a regulatory point of view. If you look at it from a technology point of view, I think India embarked the 5G journey with SA standalone, non-standalone at the same time, which I have not seen any other parts of the world doing it. Uh, we touched on to FWA, which, which practically talks about what US did it. US launched FWA and India is picking on to that. Uh, then there's a lot of discussion around reduced capacity, IoT, red cap. And if I look at the global market, China is one market where, you know, I would say the connected devices are more than the EMBB devices. And that's what India is also picking up today. And we see huge amount of uptake on the LTE narrowband IoT. But with the device ecosystem coming into play, that would be another area where we will see a lot of actions happening. And the third piece from the technology is how do you get the enterprise hooked in? And from that point of view, there will be a lot and a lot of... Uh, uh, private networks which will come into play and that's where technology will come into it. So these three segments cover the technology piece. And the last piece, which is really important where India will focus is around the people. To make all this happen, uh, the key force behind was people and the competence of the people. So India has good amount of people and power, young people who can deliver 5G and that has been proven. At one stage, India was rolling out approximately one base station every three to four minutes. And that comes from the people's strength that India has. And I think that's where Ericsson is doing a lot. 
Uh, we are now working with uh, many academias as part of the government initiative of 100 uh, 5G Smart Labs, where we have uh, tied up with DOT, and we will talk about training 10,000 people all across different academia institutes to train on to the latest technologies on 5G, which will cover 5G, AI, automation, you know, and all these uh, new things which are going to come into it. So overall, I see this huge scope, and there is a lot of work to be done by the entire industry and the ecosystem. Yeah, I think it's a, I mean, it's a great example of if you want the launches to be successful, you need the regulation to be in place, you need the use cases to be in place, you need the right technology foundations, and of course yes. the, right, the right people. But you know, what was interesting is you talked about private networks, because obviously private networks has been a big, a big focus for what could be done with 5G. I think one of the difficulties in scaling 5G uh, private networks around the globe has been there's a lot of moving pieces, right? Yes, that you can't yes. sort of, it, it's nothing an enterprise can do on its own. It's nothing that, that one vendor can do on its own. I mean, how do you see sort of, you know, the critical part with those is really collaboration, partnerships, right? You, you need an integrated solution. What do you see as the role sort of of 5G when you think about collaboration and partnerships and how is that different here in maybe India than, than some other markets? I think this is really important. Like I said, uh, where India is today is because of this collaboration and partnership among the entire ecosystem providers. And going forward, we see this collaboration and partnership to go more and more. And uh, the reason I say is on behalf of Ericsson is that uh, not only onto the ecosystem side, we really need, for example, if I talk about uh, industrial IoT, the partnership that we need to bring is, uh, like one of the CTOs said, that one of the factory, when it comes to 5G, they're not looking at IoT, they're looking at a resilient network, the network which can deliver the capabilities. And that's where we as a technology partner will have to talk to the ecosystem providers, to the network providers, and make sure that the network we deliver are resilient, have the right latency that the networks want, have the right latency for the application that they want to run it, have the right access edge technology where you know data can be stored and hosted out. So all these things to have to be done. Overall, uh, when we talk about academias, we have to partner with academias to really bring the AI piece, the intent-based AI, which has to be there for running out the networks. And moving on, not only into that, we need to really need to look at what use cases India needed. And that's where we need to work with, with the Department of Telecom here in India, where we are working on developing new use cases for India. So there is an MOU that we have signed with the DOT to run and create more use cases for India with the DOT, and then working with the academia to really make sure that the automation part or the new innovation is happening. So I think these are the areas where we see more and more collaboration needed. Uh, but having said that, uh, industrial applications is one piece of the puzzle when I look at the monetization piece. The next phase where we see 5G would be coming is API exposure. There was some discussion around that. And that's where Ericsson is working with the, you know, our platforms of One Arch, where we are talking about exposing the APIs. That will, you know, the moment we start to expose APIs, we are talking about new and new services, unforeseen services, because today when we talk about APIs, we are talking about some communication APIs, which involves basic, you know, SMS, calling, voice, all these things. But then tomorrow when we talk about new, new APIs, in terms of positioning, in terms of quality of services, quality of quality on demand, authentication, all these things would create new services avenues. And that's where we see a huge collaboration is needed in the entire industry because a telecom operator cannot launch anything without the right technology. A technology guy cannot do anything without the policy as well as without the devices and the ecosystem. I think that's where we see more and more collaboration to happen. And you definitely see, I'll say, just coming off of MWC two weeks ago, API exposure, network APIs, you know, we tracked all the activity across the top operators. It was one of the top things they were all talking about. You know, API exposure, yes. incredibly important. And I think as we've seen, we see operators looking at that going forward to 5G advanced in part, in, in part to help them execute on their B2B and, the, and their enterprise side of things. <laughs> going back to that side of things, going back to the enterprise story, I mean, are, are, there, are there two or three areas that you can think of sort of on the enterprise side of things? Because we know that's such the big hope of 5G. Are you, can you think of any immediate sort of quick wins that, that 5G can, can support the enterprise on, whether it's globally or, or here in India? You know, enterprise is something really entertaining and uh, exciting as well for Ericsson. And we are working on this. Uh, and I would like to take an example from European market for an enterprise thing. Because if you look at, if I, if I look at four zones of, uh, uh, of the world,
hoping to do. What do you see? So when we're here next year, like what do you see as the future of 5G trajectory? Is it 5G advanced? Is it executing on some of the, the use cases that we already have? I think around the world, we, we haven't done a lot with millimeter wave. Like what do you think is the, the future trajectory for 5G? And I mean, how do you see it developing globally or, or here in India? And maybe say from a, from a general perspective or from, a, from an Ericsson perspective, what you guys are doing? I think it's an interesting one. I never thought around it, but let me just think around it. If I remember one year back when we were sitting here, that time we were talking about how quickly will we launch 5G in India. And you know, today we are talking about new applications. Uh, FWA to me is done, and it's like, how do we massify? Enterprise industries are taking FWA connections. And the next big wave is how do you bring industries, uh, medical industries or industrial applications onto the board? What I see would be happening in next one year where we, when we come again is, we would see a lot of red cap uh, that would be there in the markets. And uh, we would see a lot and a lot of application which would be uplink triggered. Uh, video would be one big thing that we can expect. Because if I look at today, February 2024, we have approximately uh, 12 billion UPA transactions that we do every month in India. And maybe when we sit next year, we will talk about few millions of cameras which would be connected on 5G networks. So that is what I can see, a f uh, 4C from future one, one year down the line. Also from an industry point of view, what we see is that uh, there's one big thing which India would start thinking around is uh, uh, how do you work on infrastructure planning? Digital twin is one thing where we see there will be a lot of focus because today when we talk about infrastructure development from a country point of view, that's one area where we see uh, we are dependent on a lot of content and information. But with telecom, we can really solve this puzzle and the telecom networks can help identify where is the need of the bridges, how do you expand the roads, all the infrastructure planning will come into it. Another area where I see is, uh, you know, <clears throat> economic growth and uh, jobs. That's where I see a lot of potential that 5G can bring because we talk about all these new uh, applications which are driven by API, which are driven by AI, which are driven by, you know, a lot of other things from industry point of view. That will really call for a lot and a lot of new, uh, I would say, uh, knowledge base, competence, as well as uh, jobs. And I think India has huge potential Today, if I look at the population scale, 65 to 70% of the people in India are youth. And they are all uh, willing to learn a lot and a lot of things. So that's another area. And the third big piece of the puzzle that I see would be the sustainability part. Today, you know, we talk about, uh, if I look at a simple view, <clears throat> telecom industry is one industry which is consuming diesel and petrol in the maximum in India after the Indian railways, you know. So that's how the telecom industry is. And that's where we bring our... Uh, radios from Ericsson point of view, which is talking about delivering maximum Mbps at Hertz level with the lowest energy consumption. And I think that's valid only, not only for the RAND part, but as well for the core. So that's one area. And I can, I feel proud when I say that, you know, when we launched 5G, we brought our Gen 3 radios into India and uh, our ambition was that how can we optimize the energy consumption? And in last one year, we have brought humongous amount of new features and functionalities with automation where we have saved up to 15% of energy consumption on the 5G. So that's another area there we are working on as a vision, uh, which I think not only us, the entire industry is looking towards it because when we look at the global scale, when you look at the US operators, they talk about 2030, that they want to become a zero carbon footprint uh, network. When you talk about Australia, they're talking about 2028 as a target point. So, so I would say India would be talking about sustainable networks, more energy efficiency when we meet next time. And they would be talking about a target of maybe 2035, 2036, where they want to become onto the uh, better and most efficient uh, networks that they roll out. No, it's, a, it's an incredible point, particularly on the sustainability front. I think it's sometimes ignored that mobile operators have been, you know, the one industry that's been particularly aggressive in making net zero commitments. And I think obviously the work of folks like Ericsson and helping them do that is, is incredible, right? Thank you. I think calling back to some of what you were saying around IoT and the enterprise, I think we do forget sometimes that there's a role to play in operators of enabling efficiencies in other industries. When you talk about digital transformation of other industries supported by 5G, the benefits, the sustainability benefits of making another industry more efficient outweigh whatever it is that, that we're doing in those networks, right? By making transportation, making healthcare more efficient. There's a lot of benefits that I think the industry provides that we don't always see. So thank you for, uh, thank you for bringing that up. And, and it sounds like the cash register just, just, just rang. So uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you Peter. Much.